Mutagenesis. Noun. 1. An act of mutating process through changing the nucleotide sequence of a gene or chromosome. 2. The origin and development of a genetic mutation. Hey, wake up. This is important. What? You think you can do better? Alright, let's go. Prior to the work of Franklin, Watson and Crick in 1953 that led to the discovery of the double helical structure of DNA, studying genetic mutations was performed in a non-specific way, utilizing either radiation or chemical mutagenesis in Drosophila. Studies in the 70s kicked off extensive research into DNA recombination that continued through to the early 80s, when the first transgenic mice were produced. This field of research progressed forward through to the focus of this story. In 1987, Mario Capecchi and Thomas Kirk published a paper illustrating a protocol for creating mutations at specific sites via homologous recombination of a target gene. The target for this experiment was the X-linked hypoxanthine phosphoribosyl transferase gene, HPRT. HPRT mutants could be selected for by culturing in the presence of a cytotoxic base analogue 6-thioguanine. To mutate the HPRT gene, two types of vectors were created one for the replacement of a portion of the gene and one for the insertion into the gene. Kopecky coined these replacement and insertion vectors respectively. These vectors were constructed by the introduction of a homologous portion of HPRT into the PUC9 plasmid. The neomycin resistance gene was modified to include a translation initiator, a promoter, and was flanked with a HO1 and SAL1 restriction site. The modified resistance cassette was one kilobase long and was inserted into exon 8 of the HPRT vector to disrupt the gene. To construct the insertion vector, the homologous portions were arranged in such a way that on recombination, the exon order was maintained, and a portion of the HPRT gene was duplicated. Before transfection, any non-homologous portions of the plasmid were removed. The replacement vector utilizes the homology of the HPRT gene to specifically target exon 8 and replace it with the mutated version. The insertion vector uses a double-strand break for a combination, causing the whole vector to become incorporated. This results in some duplication of the gene, but ultimately a disruption that leads to a loss of function. When digested with appropriate enzymes, the neoresistance could be removed as a complete section for identification in electrophoresis analysis. Single pulse electroporation was used to induce transfection, and of a typical experiment of 4 to 6 million cells, 1 in 1,000 will be a successful gene targeting event. The results of this study showed that through careful design, not only can specific genes be inactivated by gene targeting, but a specific locus on a gene can be targeted. The success of the study is likely due to the careful design of the vectors. Minimization of vector size by removal of non-homologous sequences from the plasmid and the resistance gene, while at the same time increasing homology by inclusion of larger sections of the target gene, all contributed to the high transfection frequency. This protocol is extremely sensitive to sequence homology, whereby doubling the amount of homology could increase transfection frequency by up to 20 times. A 4 kilobase vector had a transfection rate of 1 in 20,000, and increasing homology to 9.1 kilobases raised the transfection to 1 in 1,000. Kopecky's studies on gene target mutagenesis were groundbreaking and resulted in the development of protocols that gave rise to the first knockout mice. To generate a line of knockout mice with a non-selectable gene, germline chimera can be created using the gene targeting protocol. Any desired gene theoretically can be targeted with an insertion or replacement vector that contains any modified gene. Transfected embryonic stem cells of a dark fur mouse can be cultured and collected. Once collected, these stem cells containing the mutation can be injected into a developing pre-transplantation embryo of a light fur mouse. This embryo can then be taken and transferred into a pseudo-pregnant surrogate mother, one that has recently mated with a sterile male. She would carry to term and give birth to some chimeric individuals. These chimeric mice could then be bred with a wild-type mouse, and half of their offspring would be wild-type, while the other half would be homozygous for the target mutation. Because these chimeric mice are heterozygous for the mutant gene, it allows the maintenance of recessive lethal genetic lines that can be selected based on fur color. In 2007, for his work developing the targeted mutagenesis protocol and the subsequent research space in mouse models for human disease that followed, Kopecky was awarded a one-third share of the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine.